Good day everybody and once again we are back together and uh, welcome to our channel. Uh, of course we are continuing to uh, be your maths and science plug and uh, if you haven't subscribed please consider being part of the family and uh, just hit that subscribe button just do it now okay all right and uh, um, please just also uh, hit that notification bell so that you are alerted every time we are posting a new lesson Okay, and um, uh, for those of you who might need assistance with mathematics or physical science, you're more than welcome to get in touch with us. And our email address is info at mlungisinkosi.co.za. All right, so today I just want us to continue with trigonometry and we are looking at compound angles. Of course, in our previous lesson, we didn't touch uh, much on that, but I did introduce them. So, of course, if you haven't watched that, uh, you might want uh, to go and have a look at them. Okay, so uh, just a quick reminder. So when we've got uh, compound angles, what we simply mean is that uh, suppose we've got the sine of uh, alpha plus beta. Okay, so what that is expanded to. Okay, so that becomes uh, the sine of alpha, uh, the cos of beta. Okay, plus uh, the cos or rather the sine of beta or the cos of alpha in that case so sine of beta uh, the cos of alpha okay so that is what it amounts to uh, but now if you have to if you change sine there and it becomes sine of alpha minus beta so therefore this sign will also change over there right and with the cos okay of the angle so the cos of alpha plus beta Okay, just remember with cos it actually changes sign. What we actually have is that we've got cos alpha, cos of beta. Okay, now if you've got a plus that becomes a minus. Okay, the sine of alpha, the sine of beta. Okay, so just keep in mind when we change the sign there and it becomes a minus. So therefore that will become a plus. Okay, so I want us to look at a couple of examples, all right, uh, uh, where we are going to apply that, all right? Um, so let's do our first example. All right, so let's start with our very first example. So we've got sine 45 plus x uh, and sine 45 minus x is equal to uh, 1 over 2 cos 2x. Now they want us to prove the identity. And remember what we said is that we are going to work with the left hand side and the right hand side separately. Uh, in fact, maybe I want to have more space there because that does look a little bit longer. So I'm going to have my right hand side over there. I'm just going to squeeze it into a corner. So this is going to be half the cos of 2x. All right, now let's expand that uh, using uh, the compound formula uh, for sine. So this is going to be the sine of 45, okay? Uh, the cos of x plus uh, the cos of 45 sine of x, okay? Yeah, I did say that uh, obviously we're going to be really, really, uh, constrained in terms of space there so this is multiplied by so let me put that in brackets if you don't mind so uh, this is going to be multiplied by uh, sine of 45 okay so that's sine of 45 um, cos of x right now please remember there's a minus sign over there so uh, also that becomes a minus, okay? So if you don't mind, I'm just going to write it beneath, okay, and try to rectify that. So this is going to be minus the um, cos of 45, um, the sine of x, okay? And we close that bracket. Sorry about that uh, constraint in, stem, in terms of space. Uh, so maybe just to create some more space there, uh, what I'll do is that I'll just uh, put this over there. All right, now to go to the next part. Now, this is a special angle. Of course, I know I've, I haven't touched on special angles as yet, uh, but we're coming there. So we know that sine of 45 is going to be root 2 
over 2. So let me just write it as a special angle. So that's root 2 over 2 cos of x plus uh, cos 45 is actually the same thing. So that's root 2 over 2 sine of x. Okay. So that's our first bracket multiplied by, uh, again, sine of 45. That's going to be root 2 over 2 uh, cos of x. Okay. Uh, minus, in this case, root 2 over 2 uh, sine of x. All right. Now, um, of course, if you know about the difference of two squares, remember when you've got two brackets that have the same thing, and in this case, the only difference is that uh, you've got different signs there, then we know we end up, uh, for argument's sake, if I've got a plus b and a minus b, Okay, so what that results is I end up with the difference of two squares, a squared minus b squared, of course, because the middle terms will uh, kind of cancel out. Okay, so uh, in this case, what I end up with uh, is that I end up with uh, two brackets. There, I've got two brackets over there that are exactly the same. So I am going to actually say I'm going to end up with uh, root 2 over 2 cos x squared minus root 2 over 2 sine x squared. So that will be the difference of two squares. Of course, you can expand this if you want to, uh, but I've just shown you uh, how we actually derive that from factorization. Right, so in this case, root 2 over 2, uh, so that will become what? 2 over 4. Okay, uh, remember when I square that uh, uh, root 2, it becomes 2. And 2 squared, uh, it, that's going to be 4. So that's cos squared of x uh, minus, in this case, again, 2 over 4 sine squared of x. Right, so 2 over 4, that's the same as 1 over 2. So I can take that out as a common factor, okay? Uh, so I will have 2 over 4 uh, cos squared of x minus sine squared of x. And uh, obviously, if you can see that there, you'll see that uh, uh, this inside the bracket is actually going to be uh, the cos of 2x, okay? So that's going to be 1 over 2 times the cos of to x and of course we have proven what is on the right hand side is equal to the left hand side so therefore means left hand side is equal to right hand side okay so that is how we applied the concept of compound angles let's take another example just for us to expand and see how it works all right so uh, looking at the next one all right, so uh, uh, quickly, um, so they say we need to simplify using the compound formulae. So sine of 40 cos 20 plus cos of 40 sine 20. Of course, it's easy to see how that is actually the expanded form of uh, the compound formula. So in this case of sine, that is. Uh, so that's going to be the sine of 40 uh, plus 20, isn't it? So in this case, that will be sine of 60, okay? And uh, we all know, uh, for those of us who have not done uh, a special angles as yet, uh, we'll get there at some point. Uh, what we do know is that the sine of 60 is actually root uh, 3 over 2. And so that will be our final answer. So the answer there would be root 3 over 2. Or in this case, you can just leave it as sine 60. And when you have not done special angles as yet. Okay, right, let's go to the very next one. All right, so quickly let's look at the next one. So now we've got cos of 3 theta, sine theta minus sine of 3 theta, uh, cos of theta. Now I want you to be very careful before you quickly uh, run into it. You can see that, uh, of course, that's going to be the uh, the, the compound formula, uh, formula rather, of uh, um, sine. 
However, in this case, remember that uh, we always start with the sine of theta and cos theta uh, thereafter. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swap these around, okay? Uh, but now what I'm going to do in order for me to swap them around, okay, in fact, let me take them as they are first. So that's going to be sine of minus the sine of 3 theta uh, cos of theta plus uh, the cos of 3 theta uh, sine of theta. Right, so that is uh, how it would be. So in this case, let me just take out the negative so that I've got that inside the bracket there. So that's minus sine of 3 theta cos of theta. Now note in this case, if I've taken out the negative, so that should be negative so that once you multiply that negative there, it gives you back the positive. Okay, hope that makes sense, right? So in this case, this will be uh, minus uh, cos of 3 theta uh, sine of theta. Now it's back to uh, its original form. Okay, so now we know how that will become minus. Now, if we take what's in the bracket, so that is minus the sine of 3 theta uh, mi uh, uh, minus theta. So note there's a negative there. So in this case, we end up with... Uh, minus the sine, remember there's still that negative there, minus sine of uh, 2 theta. And that's our final answer, right? Um, you know, there is actually another way of uh, uh, getting to the answer to this one. Um, I'm not sure if I should uh, actually entertain it, uh, but nonetheless, okay, let's, let's, let's go into it. Let's go into it. So another way that you could um, have done the same question, okay, um, is that, look, you already have uh, the expanded form uh, of sine theta, uh, 3 theta and uh, theta there, right? So how we're going to proceed, in fact, let me just make some more space here. Okay, so let me rewrite it again. So that was sine okay let me just go back to it so that was cos 3 theta sine theta okay let's just copy it down so that's cos of 3 theta sine sorry sine of theta okay and we said that was minus sine of 3 theta uh, cos theta Right, so we could have kept it exactly as is, all right? However, if you just swap these around so that it becomes uh, into its original format, so you'll have sine of theta cos, okay, of 3 theta minus, so all you're doing is just swapping those values around. Uh, and remember, multiplication is also commutative, so... In that case, it doesn't matter what order you put them, you always get the same product. So in this case, uh, cos of theta, uh, sine of 3 theta. So what you would have ended up with here is that you end up with sine. Okay, so we would have ended up with the sine of theta minus 2 theta, uh, sorry, minus 3 theta rather. Okay, and so you'd have sine of negative 2 theta, okay, uh, because you now have placed them in that particular order. And by the way, uh, remember our cast diagram, this tells us, um, so the sine of minus 2 theta, that's in the fourth quadrant in this case, so in, uh, um, so you'd have minus the sine of 2 theta, and that would be your final answer, okay. So either way, uh, we get to the same answer. All right. So I want us to take uh, just uh, uh, one more exercise and then uh, obviously we'll try and wrap it up. I hope that you are getting the gist of this. All right. All right. Now let's uh, have a look at this one that involves a little bit of reduction uh, formulae. All right. Something that we've already done as well. 
Right, so when they give you numbers, of course, uh, when you look at this, we've got numbers that are not the same. Cos of 79, cos of 311, plus the sine of uh, 103, sine 49. So in this case, what you do is try and reduce all the angles into, uh, um, you know, angles in the first quadrant by using the reduction formula. So I'm going to leave cos of 79 as is. So that's going to be cos of 79 because it's less than 90. However, I can have cos of 311. Um, we can express that as, let's see, because I see we've got a 49 on the other side. Uh, so if I say, uh, because there'll always be somewhat something similar there. So if you say 360 minus 49, okay. Yeah, you do get 311. So you can say this is 360 minus 49 okay plus sine 101 again so i need to express this as an angle in the first quadrant so i can say this is 180 minus 79 okay i see there's a 79 there and then i've got sine of 49 that's in the first quadrant so i don't need to tamper with it so in this case i've got cos of 79 Okay, so cos of uh, uh, 360 minus 49. Now, going back to our cast diagram, okay, uh, there we have it there. Cos in the fourth quadrant uh, is positive, so that will be cos of 49, okay, plus sine of 180 minus 79. Again, this is in the second quadrant, so sine in the second quadrant would be positive. So this will be equal to positive the sine of 79. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, it means you haven't watched our lesson on reduction formulae. Just go back to that lesson and it will be of assistance to you. Okay, so that's sine of 49. Um, of course, now what we can try to do, uh, you can see how that is the reduction formula, cos, cos, sine, sine. That's definitely uh, the uh, uh, the cost reduction formula okay the expanded form of it so that's going to be the cost of now you've got a positive here which means that the angles inside would be subtracted right um, so in that case it's going to be 79 okay so that's cost of 79 minus 49 take uh, if you take that it will actually give you that entire expression back so now this is equal to the cos of, if I take 79 minus 49, that will give me 30. And of course, the cos of 30 degrees would be actually 3 root 3 over 2. Um, of course, if you haven't done uh, um, special angles, don't worry too much about it. We will be tackling uh, that probably in the next episode. All right. And I think I want to leave it there. Uh, but I think I want to make it a habit, you know, to always give you something to do. Uh, if you can, uh, let me know uh, what your answers are in the comment section. I just want to give you one. Uh, let's take cos of 8, um, sine of 82, um, plus cos of 82, uh, the sine of 172. Please let me know in the comment section, okay, what you get as your final answer there. Just try to simplify as far as you possibly can. And um, uh, yeah, just give me those, uh, those answers so that I see if you really understood from this lesson. All right, I think I want to leave it there as far as the compound formula is involved. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Uh, you know, hit that notification bell, share, like, okay, click on the like button. And of course, uh, I always appreciate your comments. Uh, they do help us, um, you know, to try and improve on whatever it is that we are doing. Okay, otherwise from me for now, it's thank you for now. And I'll see you guys next time. Shop shop.